Hello everyone, Larry, WD0AKX, and uh, I have a Drake TR4CW, I'll show you, and it hasn't been powered up in several years, and I think uh, it's about time I get this uh, radio back on the air here from my ham shack. Um, I purchased it brand new in 1976, and I used it as my main radio in the shack up until about 1987 or so. Um, somewhere in there in the late 80s when I purchased my first solid state uh, HF transceiver Kenwood TS440 which I still use to this day that's a great radio but the Drake uh, was probably one of the best tube type radios HF transceivers for ham radio on the market uh, comparable with the Collins radios I guess and um, the Drake sold for a little bit less money I purchased this for $600 approximately brand new from Electronic Center in Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota in 1976. So since I haven't had it powered up in several years here, uh, probably uh, it's been uh, well over 10 years I would say since it was last powered up. It's just kind of been sitting. I've been using my other radios and as time went on I was kind of afraid to power it up, uh, fearing possibly uh, one of the electrolytic capacitors might have dried up or or uh, weakened and I hate just powering it up and blowing something out so I thought I'd bring it down on the bench here and power it up slowly so that's what I'm gonna do bring it up on the very act just to be sure it might power right up but I don't want to take a chance at that and uh, maybe I can help reform some of those old capacitors but the Drake was known for using uh, excellent components in it so hopefully everything works this is the unit here and this is the matching power supply and speaker MS4 speaker with the AC4 power supply that mounts internally on the speaker here so it hasn't been powered up let's get it on the bench and we'll slowly bring the voltage up I'm gonna let it sit over time so we'll come back and show you that here alright I'm gonna start out by I have everything hooked up no power applied and I'm gonna Turn the radio on, and we'll move over here. There's the uh, original manual, by the way. And there's the power supply. I have it removed right now from the speaker cabinet. And what I'm going to do, I have it plugged into a Variac power supply there, and we're just going to let the radio sit and bring the voltage up slowly. Okay, I have the power supply plugged into the Variac and isolated power supply here. I have my voltage set to minimum right now. I'll go ahead and turn the switch to on, monitoring my voltage. I'm going to bring the voltage up slowly here. I'm going to start out, I'll go to about uh, 20 volts. I slowly brought it up to about 20 volts here. Now I'm just going to let this sit for a few hours and uh, then bring the voltage up a little more. So I'm going to do this in steps over a period of uh, of a day or two here and uh, I'm just gonna let the radio sit and uh, cook while I bring the voltage up slowly uh, maybe 10 or 20 volts at a time here okay so later on I'm up to about 60 volts here everything's looking looking good so far um, checking my current draw up to just a little over about a half an amp there or so so, okay, bring it up just a little more now. Let's go up slowly here. We'll go up to about 80 volts and we'll let it sit there for a little while. Okay, and I do have a pilot lamp lit up there and the pilot lights behind the dials and meters here are lighting up now at 80 volts. No signs of smoke. And voila, I'm at 120 volts now, and the radio does seem to be working. I haven't got the antenna hooked up, but I am hearing audio out of the speaker, and everything is looking good so far. There you can hear the audio. So let's go ahead and hook an antenna up. All right, no problem, do you take care, man? And I'm going to pass the microphone around because I'm going to step out. I'm going to step out because I'm supposed to pick up some wine for to 
Jack and Harold and the rest listen in from high above. W1GUD offers good luck, good night, and we hope to hear everyone tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern. 2100 Zulu. W1GUD's QRT. Well, it certainly appears the radio is receiving okay. I've been switching around the bands here, and it is picking up a lot of this signals. This is the power supply. And there's a bias control there, and I want to double check that. It was set originally when I got the radio, but I want to check that again. The bias control needs to be set at a certain level for the radio to operate properly and safely. So to do that on the radio, there's the transmit gain control here, and that needs to be set fully counterclockwise. And the sideband control to its counterclockwise position, just going by the manual here. And now, looking at the top meter there, the plate amperes meter, while uh, turning the sideband CW control to sideband, or CW, XCW position, I want about 0.1 amps on the plate current meter here, which looks like I'm pretty close there. I'll vary the control here slightly. There's, there's 0.1 amp. I don't know what I was thinking. I was trying to show a little bit out of passenger in the truck and, and lit it up, but I didn't mean to light it up in front of a coat. Okay, I want to make sure my VFO dial is aligned properly, showing me the correct frequency on the band. Right now, I am on the 40 meter band, 7 megahertz, as you see. There is a crystal calibrator built into this radio. Right here is a calibrate switch. Puts out a marker signal every 100 kilohertz on the band so you can align the dial. And you have to do this whenever you switch bands. So, I'll show you how to read the frequency first of all. You see the 7 megahertz, 7.0 on the switch. So you take that 7 megahertz and you add it to this top 200 on the dial and then what's below that so right now I should be right on 7.200 7.205 7.210 megahertz but now on the zero mark I want to align the let's line this up here so I'll switch that switch into the calibrate mode and you'll hear a marker signal there and I want to zero beat the signal to zero here and you'll hear how I do that by I can hold the dial this outer part of the dial you hold that and uh, turn on the inner part of the dial and that's how you set this knob to read out the correct frequency so listen for the marker my zero beat here as I adjust it <laughs> That's zero beat, so I should be right on frequency there now, 7.200. Okay, now I will go to 20 meters, 14 megahertz, and the dial works a little different on 20 here. Move the camera. On the 20 meter band only, on this radio, on the Drake TR4CW, use the bottom scale, the bottom half, you can see it's marked with 20 meters, 20 meter band on that scale. So right now, I'm reading the bottom, 300, 14.300, and then I am going upwards by turning this way, clockwise. So there's 14.310, 14.320, etc. Now let me check my calibration on this band. I'll turn the calibrate switch on. You can see I'm off a little there, so let me adjust. There's zero beat. 75 nautical miles southwest quadrant, 
and 110 nautical miles northwest quarter. Seas 12 feet or greater within 240 nautical miles northeast quarter. Okay. Now, for receive, there's an RF tune button, and that has to be peaked up for each band. It's like a pre-selector. You just tune it for maximum receive signal. So for controls, we have the plate and the load for the transmitter, and the RF tune. And our upper and low upper and lower sideband uh, indicator lights. Our mode selector switch, the calibrate single sideband, CW and AM modes. And our transmitter gain, controlling the transmitter. And our on-off volume and RF gain selectors. Our uh, band selector switch. And sideband upper or lower sideband or the CW 500 Hertz filter. It was an option on this radio so I don't have it installed but there is a noise blanker switch there for the optional noise blanker. And the main VFO tuning dial. And here's an example of how the 500 Hertz filter works on CW. The band isn't too congested right now, but uh, when it's really congested, that filter really helps out a lot on CW. Good to meet you. Uh, yeah, I didn't get your name. I do get that you're in Bozeman, Montana. Handle here is Larry. Handle is Larry in the QTH near Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Near Hattiesburg, Mississippi. So, back to Bozeman. Okay, 7 BZN, Alpha Golf 5 Zulu. I, I could have had the 746 Pro uh, when I was uh, uh, first uh, made contact with you there. Yeah, I think it was. Because I haven't had the 756. Uh, uh, we could always uh, use some, but uh, they're, they're saying that we're probably going to get rain on Thanksgiving. So it's been oh well. quite some time since we had a chat. Anyway, I'd let you go there, let you call us more. Yeah, you got a good signal out here in the West, so I'm sure there's some other people that are hearing you there, David. W0, uh, W0, I bet, BNY. Hey, you said, why do you care? And this is a look at the rear panel. And on the side, we have the headphone jack, a mic jack, a Vox control, the anti-Vox, and a zero to zero out the S meter, and a key jack for a Morris code key. Now you might be wondering about the feet on the, these radios. This is not standard. Uh, what I use, I like everything kind of angled up a little more, so for years I've been using these 35 millimeter canisters, film canisters. That's all they are, it's little plastic film canisters. But that is the standard feet that it comes with. Okay, now I'm going to tune up the transmitter on uh, 20 meters. I have it run into a dummy load, so I'm not transmitting on the air. But uh, we'll see if the transmitter still works. And I peaked my RF tune for maximum volume right now and receive, and I'm on a dummy load, so it's kind of hard to tell. But uh, what I want to do now is put the transmitter into the XCW mo uh, position and slowly bring up a little transmitter gain until I get a little reading here. And then I want to dip the plate for minimum plate reading, plate current. Bring up the gain a little bit and we can increase the load a little bit here and keep peaking or er, dipping the plate. Bring up my gain a little more here. And I'm up to about uh, 500 milliamps. That's about as high as I want to go. I can push the load in and peak the relative power output while again getting a dip on the plate there. And I should be about set to go. I peaked the RF tune there again. 
and I might want to back that off just a touch but uh, looks like it is putting out power here showing uh, power output on the relative power output scale the power input uh, is rated at 300 watts PEP sideband 260 watts CW and uh, 200 watts or 260 watts PEP on AM okay I have a watt meter hooked up here I'm on the 200 watt scale so full scale is 200 watts and as you can see I'm right at that full scale where I did my tune up on 20 meters now these radios will usually uh, put out more power on the 75 and 80 meter band on the lower frequencies and as you get higher in frequency uh, the power drops a little but you can easily uh, uh, transmit with over 200 watts of power on these. Okay, I just plugged the microphone in. Let's see if we got some audio here on sideband also. I'm in the sideband mode here now. And I'm in the dummy load yet. Hello, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. WD0AKX testing, 1, 2, 3, 4. As you can see the meter me uh, move there. So it looks like our transmitter is working uh, on sideband also. Now this is the microphone that I've always used with this radio. It's an Astatic D104 Silver Eagle. It was made in 1976, so it's a bicentennial version of the microphone. It was only made during that year, and it has the silver back and the silver base to it. So I'll show you a little closer picture, but I've always got really good audio reports on the air with this microphone. It does match up with this tube type radio very well. Here's the front side of the mic. Is the push to talk switch on the side here and also down on the base? And on the back, you can see the Silver Eagle. And since I don't do a lot of CW use, I just have a straight key and I use it occasionally. This is the rear of the speaker cabinet where this power supply will mount. There's plenty of room in there so I'm gonna end up putting that back in there when I wrap the project up here. Okay I'll give you a little peek inside I got the housing removed while I have it open just give you a quick peek here see if I can get in a little closer you can see it has quite a tube line up there this is the top side of the radio and that's the final output section under that cage there. A lot of high voltage present in there when it's powered. Here's a look at the bottom side. There are a lot of components there. Get a little closer here. Let's give you a quick quick peek. Underneath the Drake TR4 CW. You can just see the craftsmanship that went into this radio. It's really built very well. And there it sits, back in the radio shack here, ready to go on the air. And uh, sitting alongside uh, all my uh, newer equipment here in that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and 73 WD0AKX.